Hi friends, so I recently purchased this and grew a bunch of seedlings in there and it's so convenient and I water it, you know, overhead and it stays in a tray and I was growing a bunch of things, tomatoes and peppers in particular and I grew two to three to a cell and I might even split it, I might just tear the, the pot in half and grow two for everyone, so I don't know. Yeah, but I, I just like to have extra seedlings in case nothing grew in that cell. So I grow more than one seedling per cell. So I got more of these Jiffy 32 cell peat cells, seed starting Jiffy strips. And so um, I got those and then I also got these round ones, these cylindrical pots. And um, so today I sewed numerous seeds um, so last time I grew lots and lots of tomatoes and chili peppers and then um, next I grew some cucumbers I sowed some cucumbers which I don't believe I filmed and then now I'm growing a lot of herbs so and my gardener broadleaf sage and my gardener mammoth basil look at how lovely that is you can use it in wraps. And some fairy morse parsley, Italian flat leaf. And some lime basil. And the scent is so magnificent. Common cilantro. So my cilantros are going to seed. Let me show you. So they're going to seed. They've already flowered and now they're going to seed. There are many green seeds. We're going to wait till those turn brown and collect those. But um, even the green ones are edible. It's coriander seeds. Um, yeah, it tastes really good. Next, I sowed some culinary basil. So I put three of these to a, a cell in case it grows several different varieties. And basil leaf... Um, lettuce leaf basil, there you go, and cinnamon basil. Because I love basil, I collect tons of seeds of different varieties. So let me show you where I sowed them. So here are what I sowed, and I'm gonna cover them up with some soil, water them, and then um, my daughter grew some of her own with her friends. So friends, this is that first batch of tomatoes and chili peppers. Well, actually it's the second batch. So, but the first batch is sown in the Jiffy Pots. So they're doing fantastic. As, I, as you can see, this is one cell and it's got two plants. So I could just split them. Same with that one. And some, there only, only one popped up, but they're very young yet. So you see. Some have two, some have one, and they're all starting to peep up. So there's chili peppers 
and then there are tomatoes and I just kind of lightly water this and uh, we got some rain so I didn't water it today but I did cover it so it wouldn't get flooded now that is my first set of tomatoes so the tall ones on the left are the ones they were grown at the same time as sown at the same time as these other ones on the right but they had a better germination rate and then there were about four to four to five plants per pot and I separated them separated them out so um, for the vintage wine tomato I got 15 plants and for the Kellogg's breakfast I got 12 plants and then when I divvied out the recent one which is the um, chocolate striped tomatoes I got 12 plants so you can only see one of each in each pot and then this one I'm gonna have to separate once it starts to grow the plants I think it's too cold for these or they take longer to germinate so there are the rest of the divided out Kellogg's breakfast and vintage wine and chocolate striped tomatoes so I there are one to per pot and I've given away a couple plants to some friends and I'm going to give the other ones to family. And just to give you a picture of how things are getting along, um, these are the okras. I sowed the seeds just last week and I mean almost like two days later it popped up some green little nubs and now the leaves are popping up and they're pretty quick. They're going to produce uh, the vegetable the okra in 56 days I believe so very very quick and over there were my tetsoi spinach chard pak choy and they went to seed and some cilantro and that's okay I'm gonna pull them up soon um, as you can see the chard and spinach are bolting pull them up clean out that garden that bed and throw some more okra seeds in there I believe because I want more of the same things so I have enough of the same things so I can stir fry them or cook them at the same time instead of just a little bit of everything over there I grew some cucumber and some herbs and I forget what else I put in there I think I showed it in a video but I, I've forgotten and I can't get over there in this area because I'm being blocked off by my okra and my onions and my allium bed here. Out of the six seeds I put into the soil, two of the Burgess cantaloupe came up, but I'm sure the other ones will come up too. It's just really, it got really cold. It was warm and then um, it cooled off a little bit in the last day or two and then it rained today and tomorrow it's going to sprinkle a little bit and then it'll be sunny again and trust me when it gets sunny it gets really really hot almost immediately so that's the corn it's about two and a half three weeks old and maybe two and a half weeks old but look at that they're so tall already so my thought is I'm going to give a pot to each family member and they can um, sow it into their garden I mean plant it out and because the one pot has like old, like over 20 plants I believe and there are the other corn in the other pots over here I have three out of six seeds that I sowed for Tigger melon that popped up and three out of six or seven seeds of Kajari melons one itty bitty one itty bitty watermelon orange watermelon one crenshaw melon and two black beauty zucchinis there's another view of the corn despite the cilantro being in the way and there's the gorgeous sunflower So I brought several of my plants over to my family's house 
And so they each get um, four plants and then they'll be just growing it into their gardens. And I have my set as well. So that way we each have those different plants and it'll we can propagate it further or just have it for ourselves. Everyone has the variety. Here's another load of tomatoes to hand out. Remember how I planted lots of green beans? Um, it was the yard long beans and the Gita pole beans. And I was waiting for them to climb up, grow and climb up this section here of enclosure that I have on the outside of my enclosure because inside I have lots of crops and what happened was every so often a possum or raccoon or whatever was coming in here and digging all around the periphery here and I was giving up hope on the green beans growing and I had two rounds of green beans that I stuck into the soil. I had soaked them and then I stuck them in this area here. I know that the soil here is pretty hard. Um, it was mostly mulch. However, I, I just kept watering it and trying to make the soil improve and maybe it was just that it was not hot enough because finally I'm starting to see the sprouts. So there is one. There are a couple there. Another here, I believe, next to a clover. Another one. Yep, another one there. Another one there. 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 What I started to do was stick these uh, metallic things kind of as a barrier, and they still went in there the day after I stuck these things in. So now I'm just putting a bunch of random things. Um, hopefully, things with weight but just to make it difficult for them to dig up. So I have that on this side and let me show you the other side. So this side was supposed to be flowers but the flowers never came up because this soil is even worse than the other section I just showed you and it's on another side of that enclosure but over here I stuck in the latest um, seeds and five of them popped up and nothing 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 and then I put some Malabar spinach here so it can climb up here. And I put some melon seeds here and I was so surprised they popped up. But mostly this corner remained undisturbed for the most part, except maybe once. And snap peas, some gorgeous California poppies. It really took off. Even more gorgeous poppies. Some more snap peas over here in my pot. But in succession planting, first it was snap peas and then now I threw a tomato in there. And what tomato is that? Kellogg's breakfast. So on this side, it's going one, two, three, four beans, a huge gap, five, six, seven beans, eight, possibly nine, ten, ten beans. And then I had to go around over here because I sowed so many, I soaked so many beans that I needed and I wanted them to grow. So. I overseeded, overplanted. One, two, two came up over here. Another unexpected thing that happened was we had a recent rain about four or five days ago, and my borage I should have known to prop it up, so it got too tall, and the rain just kind of pushed it down, and it fell over into my little borage way path. So as you can see, there's a ton of bees still going after the flowers so I'm gonna just rather than trying to prop it up I'm just gonna pull up all the boards feed them to the chickens and then start over here in this section here of throwing in maybe my corn or my okra or something so I am halfway through I still have to clean up that 
Um, I'm just going to let the bees enjoy that for now during the day. And then um, at the in the evening, I'm just going to pull up the rest of it and throw it in the chicken run. And then I will clean up this soil, kind of move everything to the edge there so all the borage seeds will start to grow back there again. So the borage will be up against the wall and then in front of it will be some sunflowers. I think and then some corn or just straight corn I haven't yet decided. So borage whey is making its way into the chicken run and as you can see I'm telling you the truth they love pecking at all the leaves all the flowers it's great stuff. It feeds the bees and the chickens and us. bought a French lavender and a Tuscan blue rosemary last year and I never pl planted it into the ground so I'm doing that right now here and I gave the other ones to my brother so that way I have many many an air and a spare so I have another Tuscan rosemary elsewhere it's huge but I'm just growing this one just in case anything happens to the other one and French lavender, I don't have French lavender, so I wanted this variety. So that's at the base of my loquat tree, and it will be nice and dry because it likes to be dry. And as far as the loquat goes, I don't water it, I just let the rain do it. Um, except in the heat of summer, it does suffer, and that's when I start to water it. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to sow these corn and I pulled it out of the pot and it's like a cake, basically. And then I see that there are some seeds that didn't, didn't germinate. So I might repot those, I'm not sure. Or I don't know if they're no good, but I'll try. So here I have sown two rows of corn. I was going to plant them closer together. However, if I do, then I won't have a path to go check on the corn and to pluck the corn. So I just have to keep this big area in between. But then between them, I did plant them closer. And then over there against the wall is the uh, mammoth sunflower. Hopefully it'll grow nice and lush here. I want lots of sunflowers. I love it. And then you have to put some distance between that and the corn because sunflowers emit some kind of chemical substance in their in their roots to prevent other plants from growing. So I took that into consideration and gave them a good gap in between. Over here I have a problem where my pine Pineapple guava, the feijoa branch, is sticking way out, and I'm not sure if something t tried to climb it, but suddenly this branch is down by the ground. So, I don't have too many tools around here, so what I did was I took this, um, what do you call it, it's a concrete, like, stabilizer, you put, you put, you stir up concrete and you put this in there and um, it keeps it from cracking. So I use that to prop up my feijoa and that way it gives sunlight to my strawberries. Which I do believe something has climbed up my feijoa and pulled down many of the branches. As you can see there's a lot of the blossoms and also this branch broke off. So. If you look in here, a lot of the branches are, oh yeah, they're, they're practically horizontal and this one's broken as well. 
So it's really frustrating. I'm going to have to come in here and take a pruning shear and prune it. But it's really frustrating when animals keep coming around, raccoons, possums, stuff like that. It just really thwarts any effort that I make. Any type of progress is thwarted with some other some other problem. It's very frustrating. Anyway, look at this beautiful hot pink rose. It's so gorgeous. And this calendula is not like the bright orange variety. It is Pacific Beauty, but this one's more like a, a, a muted yellowish orange. Really, really pretty. Peachy. Hi friends, I made this bed about two to three months ago and I sowed a lot of chili pepper seeds in here. I threw some random seeds in here. As you can see, this row is, as you can see, this row is radishes and it just came up like that much. I mean, this bed didn't have the best soil. I had pulled mulch that had broken down from another section of the garden and I put it as the base layer. And then I had put some leftover soil on top and I've been watering it religiously and I guess the temperatures weren't hot enough to for the peppers because they did sprout or germinate but they didn't do very well like I don't know if that's a chili pepper I doubt it and this one looks like a chili pepper but that's the biggest one and it's been, the seeds have been in here since February or March, something like that. And I tried to cover them um, over the, uh, the cold, cold weather, the rains. And this might be a cucamelon, I'm not sure. It looks kind of like one. And I threw some cucumber seeds in here, some burpee basil seeds. Um, all kinds of stuff and nothing really sprouted so it's really been disappointing I still have hopes for my chili peppers the weeds are growing through the cardboard that was um, at the very bottom and through that mulch so I'm kind of worried that the weeds are overtaking underneath the soil um, but for the time being since nothing is growing here and I really value the chili pepper, so I'll leave this section alone for now until, and see if this hot weather won't draw up the, um, allow the chili peppers to grow, because they like hot weather. And so over here, I'm gonna start sowing. I had English breakfast radishes and stuff, which never popped up other than this here. So what I'm going to do is, in this whole section, um, it shouldn't have anything really, I mean I haven't seen anything pop up, so I'm going to sow this okra, emerald, and it's nice and hot right here, so I'm just going to stick it into the ground, and whatever comes up, comes up.